How bad is EA's kernel level anti-cheat javelin? Let's talk about it. Mike here with Tectonic Systems. Welcome back to the channel. Battlefield 6 is currently topping pre-order charts. And the one thing I keep seeing popping up is that it installs and runs a kernel level anti-cheat on your PC. That's raised a lot of concern and for good reason. Let's break down what that actually means so you can understand what's happening when this anti-cheat is running and stick around to the end of the video for ways to minimize its impact on you and your data. This isn't about whether it actually does a good job stopping cheats. This video is also not legal advice or an accusation. It's a breakdown of publicly available information to help you make an informed decision. So first, what even is a kernel? The literal definition is a great starting point. According to Merriam-Webster, a kernel is the inner softer part of a seed, fruit stone, or nut. Now hang on to that image, we're gonna come back to it. In computing, the kernel is the core of your operating system. It's the part of the software that sits closest to your hardware, like your CPU, RAM, GPU, etc and acts as the bridge between your applications and the physical machine. It also manages communication between your operating system and your firmware like your BIOS or UEFI. Because of its role, anything that runs in kernel mode has full unrestricted access to your system. That's as deep and privileged as it gets in computing. Now that definition makes more sense, right? That inner softer part, the kernel, is protected by layers of security, just like the hard outer shell of a nut or seed. It's the most sensitive part of your system. So is kernel level software always bad? No, not at all. For example, GPU drivers have components that run at the kernel level because they need that access to communicate directly with the graphics card. So the real question we have to ask isn't whether something runs in the kernel, it's why it's running there. If the software has to run at the kernel level to conduct its function properly and it's securely designed, that's an acceptable way for it to run. But if it could run just fine in user mode, which doesn't have complete and unfettered access to your system, and the developer still chose to run it in the kernel, that's a red flag because you're giving something full control of your system without a good reason. And if that software isn't thoroughly vetted or has vulnerabilities, now you've got a direct pipeline into your most sensitive system processes. So the next question we have to answer is, why does the anti-cheat need to run at the kernel level and not just in user mode like most programs? Well, a Wired article quotes Paul Chamberlain, who's worked on anti-cheat systems for Valorant, Fortnite, and League of Legends, and he says that by 2015, most serious cheat developers had already moved to using kernel level drivers in their cheats. A good example of this is a Ring Zero aimbot a cheat that operates directly at the kernel level. And this is how it works. It reads the memory in real time, locating players' positions directly in memory. It doesn't need to interact with game files or inject code into the game process. That allows it to bypass any cheats running in user mode because they don't have the privilege to see what's happening down at the kernel level. So now that cheats are operating at the kernel level, any cheat developers don't really have a choice. Their software also needs to run at that level or it risks being blind to what the cheaters are doing. And that brings us to the final questions. What does the anti-cheat actually do with that access and should we be concerned as consumers? EA's user agreement says that when you launch a multiplayer game, their anti-cheat systems may activate with kernel, admin, or user level access to your system. But since EA has already confirmed that Javelin runs at the kernel level, we know that this isn't just possible in this case, it is happening. So while the game is open, Javelin can scan your RAM, monitor background processes, analyze visuals and your file system, and even review in-game communications and chat logs. If it finds anything that looks like a cheat, that it thinks is suspicious, it can collect evidence, flag your account, and in some cases permanently ban you. Now EA states that once you close the game, the anti-cheat shuts down. But while you're playing, it essentially has full access to your system, and it's looking at everything with almost no technical restrictions. So is this level of access inherently concerning? Yes and no, let me explain. Running software at the kernel level for anti-cheat purposes isn't inherently bad. In fact, it's technically necessary to catch modern cheats that also operate at that level. What can be concerning though, is what you're legally agreeing to in the privacy policy and user agreement. In the case of Javelin, 
you're giving EA the right to collect, store, and share with third parties your data. There's also no way to opt out. Now, if there was a strict, tightly scoped data collection policy, this would be a properly scoped and targeted anti-cheat tool. If Javelin only collected exactly what was needed to detect and ban cheaters, and if that data was stored only as long as absolutely necessary, and if it was securely deleted using real data sanitization protocols, and if that data was never shared with anyone outside of who needs to have access to conduct anti-cheat measures and nothing more, then Javelin would not be a concerning solution to modern cheating problems. Your data is not the only risk associated with kernel level access though. We only have to go back to July, 2024 to see what the worst case risk scenario is for your actual system. In July, 2024, CrowdStrike released an update to their Falcon sensor, a security tool that like Javelin operates at the kernel level. Unfortunately, that update had a critical flaw. It caused global outages and completely bricked Windows systems that received the update for that sensor. Now here's the key connection. EA does not have to notify you when they update Javelin. Their user agreement gives them the right to silently push anti-cheat updates through game patches. If one of those updates isn't properly vetted or accidentally conflicts with other system drivers, it could do the exact same thing to your PC as what happened in 2024. Or it could open your system up to exploitable vulnerabilities to malicious actors. So what's the verdict? That's not for me to decide. It's up to you. No one can tell you what level of risk you should accept or what trade-offs you're okay with. My job is simply to lay out the facts and let you decide what those facts mean for you. But there is one important caveat to consider. Battlefield 6 and Javelin are not alone. Kernel level anti-cheat systems are already in games like Valorant, Fortnite, Call of Duty, Elden Ring, Night Rain, and many more. This is an industry-wide direction and not an EA exclusive issue. And on the other side of the coin, while apps like TikTok don't use kernel level access, their data collection is often outlined in the user agreements to be far broader. They run constantly in the background, track your behavior, and in some cases, they can even read your keystrokes and access your clipboard. So what can you do if you still want to play but you care about your privacy the good news is you can take some precautions before launching the game and during play these precautions could be closing and stopping sensitive processes like your browser especially if it has tabs open with financial or personal data you can also disconnect your phone if you have it linked for text messaging sending and receiving and you can also store sensitive and personal information on removable storage devices like an external storage drive or a usb drive and then unplug them while playing. So let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on kernel level anti-cheat. That's all the time I have for today's video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.